Hello friends! The Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea, is rightfully considered one of the most closed countries in the world, making it extremely difficult to find reliable information about it. This is because the country doesn't provide statistical data to global information banks, and any pictures or videos taken by Western tourists are heavily censored. Gaining entry to this country as a foreigner is rather challenging because there are some very specific rules for visiting. These rules have somewhat been softened in the recent years, but only for some of the neighboring countries with which North Korea maintains partnerships. The local political system is unique, but exhibits all the characteristics of a totalitarian regime, which explains the lack of any substantial information about life in North Korea. One of the challenges that tourists face when trying to gather objective information on this country is the need to coordinate their travel routes within the territory, as well as to be accompanied by an official guide at all times. Any deviation from the designated route can lead to serious problems for the tourist. During World War II, the territories of North and South Korea were part of Japan as colonies. After Japan's defeat, Korea became a contested territory, which both the Soviet Union and the United States wanted to establish control over. As a result of the division, the Korean Democratic People's Republic was formed in the northern part of the peninsula. The ruling party in the country is the Workers' Party. South Korea became an independent country under the protection of the United States and its allies. In 1950, North Korea initiated a military conflict, attempting to incorporate the southern part of the peninsula into its territory. The country got active support from China and the Soviet Union while the United Kingdom, the United States, and several other UN member states sided with South Korea. The conflict escalated catastrophically, and over the three years of warfare, the death toll exceeded one million people. Having failed to unify Korea into one single country, North Korea shifted its focus to internal policies. While South Korea pursued development in a democratic direction, its northern neighbor sought isolation and total control. As a result, the country implemented harsh censorship, established a personality cult, and experienced economic decline. All these factors led to a significant decline in the standard of living for the population and serious economic problems that remain unresolved to this day. Citizens of North Korea are indoctrinated with the Yuchi ideology, which is based on the superiority of Kim Il-sung and cultivates and legitimizes the leadership of the Kim dynasty. This ideological manipulation changes the identity of the North Koreans, erasing their individuality and leaving them with nothing but a mere echo of rights or freedom. Despite the existence of laws and regulations in North Korea, citizens are forced to abide by the 10 principles for the establishment of a monolithic ideological system. North Koreans have to memorize these principles and consider them to be the standard by which they must live. Kim Il-sung's ideology is the only thought permitted in the consciousness of North Korean citizens. Since these principles form the basis of virtually everything in society and any criticism of the state is seen as a crime, people can neither be skeptical about the government nor make any attempts to introduce any changes into their lives. The country has been ruled by three generations of the Kim dynasty. Kim Il-sung, then his son Kim Jong-il, then his grandson Kim Jong-un. None of them succeeded their predecessor in an official capacity, but each held positions with extensive authority and became objects of personality cults. This strict isolation can be explained by the leader's desire to maintain power within their family. Now, let's take a look at some of the most horrifying facts about North Korea. In present-day North Korea, people are not allowed to wear overly revealing clothes, and their main value is considered to be productive labor. Thanks to the current leader Kim Jong-un's wife, requirements for women's attire have been slightly relaxed. Women are now allowed to wear jeans, suits, high heels, earrings, and even ride bicycles. Prior to these changes, a woman in jeans could be fined for improper appearance. What do you think will happen to your family if you commit a crime in North Korea? Well, there's a three generations of punishment system in place there. This means that when a person goes to prison, 
their entire family is sent with them. Moreover, the next two generations of the family are born and live in their prisons as well. This fact is absolutely horrifying. The country also has numerous concentration camps. Approximately six of them are designated for political prisoners. It isn't uncommon for individuals to get sentenced without trial or investigation, and while in camps, prisoners are beaten, subjected to starvation, and forced to do manual labor. If you're wondering what a North Korean must do to end up in one of these labor camps, the answer is committing a political crime. It includes criticizing the government or attempting to escape the country. Every North Korean man is obligated to serve in the military for at least 10 years, during which they hardly get any time off. Until 2015, military service was mandatory only for men, but women could volunteer to serve. After the amendments were introduced, military service became mandatory for women up to the age of 23. North Koreans are taught to hate the outside world, especially the United States and South Korea, which are portrayed as their main enemies. In the 1990s, Kim Jong-il introduced Son Gun, the military first policy, that redefined the country's future. As a result of the country's focus on the military, it now ranks fourth in the world in terms of the number of active military personnel. 1.21 million soldiers, accounting for 4.7% of the country's population. And if we were to count the total number of military personnel, including active duty, militarized formation and reserves, the number would increase to almost 10 million people. The country has six-day work weeks, and an additional day is allocated for mandatory volunteer work. The average citizen has virtually no free time. After finishing high school, the government automatically provides jobs for everyone and assigns them these jobs for life. There are other job opportunities in state-controlled companies where one can earn foreign currency, but getting in without bribes is impossible. An interesting fact about North Korea is that the production, storage, and use of marijuana are completely legal and even recommended by the Ministry of Health as a healthier alternative to tobacco. Surprisingly, this is entirely true. Marijuana is not the only narcotic substance that is legal in North Korea. The government encourages people to grow opium on unused land. As for marijuana plants growing freely on the roadside, it turns out that marijuana is often planted along railway tracks to support the rails with its deep roots. According to official documents, Kim Jong-il learned to walk at the age of three weeks. Also according to official documents, he wrote 1,500 books during his university years, which included six grand operas. According to his official biography, all of his operas are the best in the history of music. In 1994, when Kim first came to a golf club, he played 38 holes, scoring 11 hole-in-ones, all in the presence of 18 bodyguards. After that, he decided to quit sports forever. Kim took sports competitions very seriously. Supposedly, the North Korean soccer team was publicly ridiculed for their defeat in the 2010 World Cup for six hours. It's not best to play soccer in this country. The success rate of the country's space program is said to be 20%. This is a very strange statistical figure, as it is not clear what kind of success it refers to. Most likely, it refers to the satellite launches since out of five satellites launched by North Korea, only one successfully reached orbit. However, the North Korean government claims that another satellite was sent into orbit in 1998 and is currently transmitting patriotic songs into space. In the 1990s, all teachers were required to be able to play accordion. They had to pass an accordion exam before they could get certified as teachers. This fact was taken from the 2009 book Nothing to Envy, which describes the lives of six North Koreans over a span of 15 years. One of the six people was a school teacher whose accordion exam was postponed due to the death of Kim Jong-il, so she had to work at the kindergarten until she passed the exam. Friends, what do you think needs to be saved first, 
besides yourself in the event of a fire or another emergency situation in North Korea. Idol worship in North Korea is so advanced that the portrait of Kim Jong-il is the second thing citizens are expected to save in case of a fire right after themselves. There are even special bunkers for the statues in case of war. There is no verified information about the paintings, but what is definitely true is that all the statues of the leader are guarded by armed forces as if they were the actual leaders of the country. It isn't the year 2023 in North Korea. It's the year 112. That's because North Korea counts the years from the birth of Kim Jong-il, not Jesus. Execution by mortar? Why not? Sounds horrifying, doesn't it? Yes, execution by mortar rounds is used in North Korea. It's a fact, but it's not particularly common. It was used on one of the high-ranking officials who didn't wait long enough to hold a party after Kim Jong-il's death and was executed for not showing proper mourning. North Korea holds elections every five years, but their ballots list only one candidate. This fact may seem surprising. While there's only one candidate for any government position, technically, voters can veto the candidate. This means they can vote against someone by crossing out their name. But to do so, the voter must enter a special booth where everyone can see what choice they make. In most countries, the number of internet users has long surpassed a million, but not here. Regular worldwide internet is not available for use here. It is replaced by the national version, intranet, within the country's borders. It contains very little information, it is subject to strict censorship, and the number of users barely exceeds 80,000. Local internet is mainly used by local companies for advertising goods and services. Most of the segment is occupied by news outlets which present information in line with the party's ideological stance. However, North Korea recently debuted its own operating system called Red Star, which is based on Linux. Some even say North Korea is undergoing a digital revolution, although on such a minuscule scale that the word deviation would describe it better than revolution. The vast majority of North Korea's electrical infrastructure is hopelessly outdated and literally falling apart. Although the country insists on replacing existing fossil fuel power plants with renewable energy sources, it hasn't yet solved the problem of extremely irregular power supply. Many household electronic devices, such as TVs, are only turned on during certain periods of the day to prevent overloading the grid. If we were to talk about the life of an ordinary person in this country, several characteristic features should be noted, as witnessed by observers. First and foremost, one should note the meager diet of the local residents, primarily consisting of rice and vegetables. Meat and fish products are unavailable to the majority of the population and only appear on the dinner tables on memorable dates and national holidays. Local stores have almost no products as residents receive food through special ration coupons. Government-issued food packages may contain vodka, sweets, and other scarce products, but it usually only happens during major state holidays. The same goes for coupons for clothes. The local population is typically severely underweight because of malnutrition. Due to the economic and food problems, the population of North Korea looks significantly different from its southern neighbors. This is primarily evident in the shorter stature, caused by constant hunger. If we were to look at the life in North Korea through the eyes of the ordinary people, we would see a highly authoritarian society with an established dictatorship. However, there have been tendencies towards easing the strict regulations in recent years. Kim Jong-un, who came to power in 2012, immediately initiated a series of economic reforms aimed at attracting foreign investments and encouraging the role of private businesses. Despite these measures, the standard of living in North Korea leaves much to be desired. Friends, that's all for today. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time.